Ah, here's a problematic gem from my childhood. A board game, just barely vintage at the time that I was playing it, or possibly just old, called What Shall I Be? The girl version of the game let me explore the options of teacher, nurse, ballet dancer, model, flight attendant, and actress. The personality cards gave you access to each of these areas. You are pretty. Your makeup is sloppy. You're a slow thinker. Like I said, problematic. What I want to know is, where is the game? What shall I be? The exciting game for career witches. Fun! Lorelai Black here from Blade and Broom still off camera this week, but here's my face in case you've been missing it. I've got links down below, and you know that liking and subscribing helps channels you love to grow and produce better and better content, so thank you for all of the ways that you show support. One of my friends, the fabulous witchy artist Jonathan Blackthorne, who has created art for a couple of my own books as well as for Robin Artisan, in addition to the host of amazing pieces he's done outside of commission work, suggested that I do a video about the kinds of witch adjacent work that's available to practitioners of the craft. So to that end, let me start by saying that witches can, can and do find fulfilling work in every field of employment under the sun. If you're bringing your magical self to the work, then it's going to be an expression of your craft. And if you bring your awareness and intention to it, like calling on spirits to aid you in certain endeavors or working energetic techniques into your process, then you'll seriously be upping your potency in whatever your field is. I'll give you an example. I've mentioned before, more than once actually, that I work in disability services. Specifically, I'm a recruitment and retention specialist whose clientele are folks with disabilities. My official job title is Supported Employment Specialist. Believe it or not, I do a decent amount of spirit work in this role. I ask the ancestors of my job seekers to assist me in finding the best work and job fit for their loved one, who is my client. And I ask my own ancestors to open the path for me to help make that happen. But what if you just want to do something super witchy? Trademark. Well, let's look at seven basic categories where your witchy calling might be. These seven categories are actually the names used in my own tradition for what we call specialties or craft specialties. They aren't offices exactly, um, like officers in some covens. They're more like vocations or callings, practical ways that your craft might choose to coalesce based on your skills, interests, and choices. Yeah, you can see the career coach coming out in me now, can't you? So before we dive all the way in, let me add three big points. A, each of these has the potential for a number of actual careers within it. B, nobody should ever feel limited to exploring just one of these callings in their lifetime. You might not be able to do it all at once, but you can definitely do all the things. If you haven't picked up on it yet, that's like a major life motto for me. And see, some of them feel more overtly witchy than others, but some can be performed in stealthy ways if that's what your life needs. Okay, so here are your seven witchy careers in alphabetical order. Number one, artisan. Be a maker of magical objects, a witchy artist or a craftsperson. Open an Etsy shop or sell on consignment in other people's shops. Maybe that's art prints like my friend John that I mentioned. Maybe it's spirit-inspired pendulums like my friend Tamitha from Pangea Farms. Blacksmithing, wheat weaving, sewing, jewelry making, sculpting, you name it. 
There are objects that we as witches use as tools within our craft, as well as countless decorative objects that add blessing, warding, cleansing, etc., to our homes and to our magical spaces. And we need talented, both magically and artistically, we need talented folks to make those objects and to bring them into our world. So if that's you, explore that passion. Number two, bard. No, you don't need to rush out and purchase a loot and find a tavern. When we talk about bards in a craft context, we usually mean folks who are weaving words and or music. These are the authors, the poets, the singers, the songwriters, the musicians, the liturgists. And I want to say the teachers, though I think teachers can emerge from any of the specialties, really. And this is also the bloggers, the YouTubers, the podcasters, the journalists, the DJs, the dancers, and the performance artists. Number three is conjurer. These are the folks who work directly with the spirits and ancestors calling them forth, talking with them, performing magic with them. It's hard to do this work and not be out of the broom closet, at least a little bit. It's probably the most overtly witchy thing on our list. You might offer your services as a psychic medium, which is the more new age verbiage, and likely won't step on any toes. Or if you practice one of the African diasporic religions, you might call yourself a title related to your lineage and rank. Of all the specialties on the list today, this is one of the most controversial, I think. The Gardnerian Ardains specifically warn against exchanging money for spell work, which is actually one of the options here to perform spells for other people and to be paid for that. And there's a lot of implicit bias on this topic embedded into the witchy ethical philosophy, at least within some traditions. I want to talk more about that, but not today. <laughs> For today, I will say, this is one of those career paths where you can hang a shingle, real or virtual, build a clientele, but don't expect to be under the radar as a magical person. Even if you use a, an alias, it is all too easy for people to figure out who you are um, in the real world. Number four is healer. The healing arts go hand in glove with the craft, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, when many people envision a witch, they picture a wise old woman who knows the herbs. Herbalists, energy healers, midwives, doulas, massage therapists, really all manner of both holistic and, and allopathic healers could be on this list, as could poisoners though we don't tend to think of the folks who make or blend our psychotropic concoctions in quite this way anymore. Druggists, pharmacists. But did you know that the Greek word pharmakeia actually means sorcery or magic? And pharmakon is poison? And that's where we get our word pharmacy. Yep, fun fact for the day. I know so many witches who are drawn to the healing professions, including nursing, psychology, social work, physical therapy, and more. We are all over health and human services. Always have been, I suppose. Number five is seer. Welcome, my children. Are you in the beyond? I think you are. <laughs> oh, I love Trelawney. When I was working as a psychic reader at a new age shop in Indianapolis, I wasn't nearly as like filmy and wispy and whimsical as dear Sybil, but anyone who is offering card, palm, stone, rune, or other readings is certainly in the profession of seer. You may or may not have actual clairvoyance, which is the ability to see with your mind's eye. Um, there's also things like clear audience and clear sentience, which have to do with hearing and knowing. Generally, the use of tools to read a client is sufficient. <laughs> a little word of warning, though. Leave the talking board at home. Evidently, I freaked out the entire shop where I worked by bringing one in as part of my own setup. <laughs> so unless you are in an overtly witchy shop, uh, Talking boards are a no-go in most places. 
Number six, votary. Working in service to a particular deity, spirit, or ancestor might be the most challenging of these vocations to actually turn into a paid profession, but it isn't impossible depending on who that service is to. So I'm a votary of Aphrodite and I can think of a half a dozen totally legal kinds of work that would easily fall under her purview. Florist, wedding planner, relationship coach, massage therapist, hairstylist, dance instructor. But going out and getting paid to be a priestess of Aphrodite, specifically, that's hard. And I literally wrote the book. Sometimes I do get paid as a wedding officiant or as a speaker or as a ritual facilitator, but not really often enough to earn a living at it. I'm not saying that there aren't opportunities here, just that contemporary American thought tends to link spirituality with poverty more often than not. However, if your deity, spirit, or ancestor wants you to work for them full time, they'll probably help you figure out a way to make that happen. Maybe through writing, speaking engagements, teaching, who knows. Or maybe through less public ways, like being in funeral services when yours is a god of death. Or being a wildlife biologist when you serve the lady of beasts. And number seven, warden. These are our protectors, defenders, and warriors. In magical spaces, they often act as sentinels and help set wards. Out in the world, vocations for these witches often include private security, armed forces, corrections officers, asset protection personnel, police, and martial artists. There are honestly a lot more of these witches out there than most folks realize, even within the witchy community. In my own regional craft community, we are full to brimming with military veterans who are also pagans and witches. And I'm sure we're not alone in that. So there you go. Seven basic categories of super witchy, trademark, careers with at least 50 subcategories. I counted them. You don't have to go back and recount. And as a little bonus, I'll share that I am or have been an artisan, a bard, a conjurer, a healer, a seer, and a votary. So in fact, I've done most of those professionally and publicly. So when I say do all the things, I really mean that I like to do all the things. What about you? Do you have a calling, a vocation within your craft practice? And do you feel moved to share that profession or to profess that calling to the world through your work? Share with me in the comments. I am interested in hearing what you do. I hope you found today's chat thought provoking and if you did, please bless me with the magic of the like button and tell your witchy friends that good stuff's happening over here at Blade and Broom. And if you'd like to learn more about how to practice traditional witchcraft or just to keep up with my shenanigans, then download my free app, The Thread, at the link below and click on the news and notes for the freebies that are there. I'll see you all back here soon, my friends, probably next week for more witchy goodness. Bye now.